Darby Allen, after having his face hit by a bus, his foot broken, and everything else probably wrong with him. He's back. He's back already, jumping on for double or nothing to fill in for an injured Eddie Kingston, a more injured Eddie Kingston. And uh, we can clearly see that Darby Allen is a very loyal AEW talent. In fact, he might be the most loyal. He's often compared to Sting. And it's not just because of the face paint. It's certainly not the demeanor. He is a completely different personality than Sting. But he does, with the face painting, he's got that little bit of an enigma thing to him. And he's really kind of represented himself as the franchise player, the face of AEW, the diehard. The guy that's going to stick with AEW through the good, through the bad, in and out. Maybe that's the case, maybe not. But that certainly seems to be where his mind's at, at least for now, as Darby Allen was asked about this. Uh, in an interview he did with Fightful, Sean Ross Sapp, on his YouTube channel. Looks like it happened right after Dynamite. Darby's still wearing the fur coat and had the face paint and everything. And uh, he was asked about his contract status with AEW and if he plans on sticking around a while while other people seem to be testing the waters of floating back and forth. This is what Darby had to say. This has been a big uh, free agent year in wrestling. You've told me how loyal you are to AEW. You even said, you're like, that probably doesn't help my leverage a lot. And he's like, but I love AEW. I want to stay here. Are you still there uh, long term? Like, i not asking you to put a date on it or anything, but uh, oh, yeah. how is that for you? No, I'm, I'm, I'm here long term. Yeah, like I, it's not like I you know, have this crazy eight-year contract or anything, but mm -hmm. I'm, here, I'm here long term. But it's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm having the time. Of, I'm, ha I'm literally having the time of my life. And then everything I get to do outside of the ring and everything I get to do for my family and all these other projects, like this fall, I'm going to be directing my first full length film. And oh, there's, just so much, there's just so much stuff, man. Like I, I want to be this. I want to be the poster child to any wrestlers that have so much interest in hobbies outside of just wrestling where you can work on things. And I feel like AEW gives me that platform. Because, man, you think about it, like, ain't no place they're going to let me go skate with Tony Hawk or climb Mount Everest or <laughs> go to Nitro Circus and backflip a tricycle. Like, dude, like, come on, man. My, my life doesn't begin and end with wrestling. So, like, I, I feel like there's so much I need to do outside to be, like, fulfilled. And AEW gives me everything. So I have zero complaints. And it's so fun to be with a startup company. And if you're as good as you think you are, you can build this from the ground up. A lot of people feel like, oh man, I, you know, it's a safe bet if I go somewhere else that's established, it's been around for, you know, 40 years, 30 years, or, you know, whatever. But I feel like if you're as good as you think you are, you can build this house from the ground up. So get to work. I do see Darby as that person for AEW, and I love that he takes pride in being that. I like that he sees a challenge in sticking with an upstart company. And really saying, yeah, if I think I'm that good, I can help make this company something bigger. Hopefully, you know, when his contract's up, he'll stick around because I like Darby in AEW. And I don't know. It's questionable if WWE would use him in the same way. And they certainly wouldn't let him continue to do the things that he does outside of WWE. Or, I mean, outside of AEW. Outside the ring in general. Darby's very active. He's in the skate community. He's in the stunt community. He wants to climb mountains and shit. He's filming movies. He's got a lot on his plate. One of the other things he's got on his plate is he is training people. Or at least he's training a certain somebody. Now, I didn't peg Darby Allen as a guy I would want to go to for training, not to knock his wrestling ability, because he's actually very, very good. Uh, look no further than his match with MJF. It was a couple years ago. It was like the opening match of a pay-per-view. They stole the show. Darby is a lot more than a guy who takes bumps off ladders and shit through glass. He's actually a fairly good wrestler but you wouldn't think of him like that but uh, apparently he is taking somebody under his wing and training him up at his home and that person just so happens to be sting's son it was great to see like his sons get so much notoriety not just from that match but like one of them was a game streamer the other one i knew because he played football like three miles from my house in college so, like, 
seeing them do that because everybody always asks when they see his sons they're like oh would they ever do it how do you felt like they they took to this situation like it seemed like like they they were pretty pretty well naturals at, at what they did yeah um steven his son that played football is actually staying at my house right now training to be a pro wrestler really yes he's uh sleeping in a tent in my front yard I got chills. I got chills from that man. Like I, anytime yeah. people saw him, they were like, when's he wrestling? <laughs> yeah. Well, literally he's never thought of it his whole life. And then just being there at revolution, he caught, caught whatever urge to train. And then I talked to him on the phone. I talked to Stane on the phone. I said, just come down. And, uh, I got, I got a ring at my house and everything like that. So, um, yeah, he's, he's there right now. Um, yeah, it's just it's interesting to see how someone will pick up things. I love it, man. I love it. I love this so much because it's one of those things where people look, this kid grew up around wrestling his entire life. Both these kids did. And I, I had covered I did a short video actually on the other Sting son, the blonde haired one that looks just like him, that did the surfer sting. That kid, he's a video gamer online. He's got the size. He's got the look. He seemed to have loved his experience there. The other son we haven't heard from, and that's the one that Darby's training, the one that did the Wolfpack sting. Went out there. He did the stinger splash. There's a guy who has grown up around the wrestling business his whole life, right? As long as he's been alive, his dad has been a professional wrestler. Never had an interest in the business at all, Ever. Then, on Sting's very last match, this kid comes out to just dress up as his dad, do the entrance, and then have a spot where he gets to get in a stinger splash. And holy fuck, he's got a bug for it now. He likes this shit now. And why wouldn't he? Because wrestling's magic like that. It's far more than just, oh, a guy beats up this guy fake in their tights and stuff. That's how most people look at wrestling. But when you get out there, you feel that crowd. I've been in front of wrestling crowds, not big ones like that. But my God, you know, there is nothing better than a live reaction. And, and for him to get out there, him to feel that. For him to be around the business backstage, putting together the match, okay? And they went over with, okay, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. All of that shit made him go, wow, this is, this is actually fun. And he's athletic. He's a football player. He's got the build. He's a decent football player, but probably not going to go pro. College football player, right? People know him from that. Sean Rossap said he knew him from that. I've heard of him. You know, his name, you know, he's fairly good. But if he's not planning on going pro, then what? What's he going to do? Get a career somewhere? Or he could take all that strength, that build, that athleticism, the name value of being Sting's son, and, and use that to get his foot in the door. And you know what? Maybe he'll end up sucking. Who knows? Maybe it's, he just doesn't have the chops for it. He could be like an Eric Watts, right? Some people just don't have it. But a lot of second and third generation wrestlers do have it. So it'll be interesting to see if this guy, how he comes along, where we see him again, if he sticks it out. All of this is up in the air at this point. But I just think it's so cool that he got that little taste of what the wrestling business actually was alongside his dad and his brother. And he goes, yeah, you know what? I actually want to do that. And he's doing it with Darby, who is actually really good friends with Sting. He was asked, uh, I don't think it made the cut here, but Sean asked him if he still talks to him. He says, yeah, I talk to him every week. They're bros, dude. They're like family. He said his Sting's son is sleeping in a, in a tent in his yard. I don't know why he's sleeping out in a tent in his yard. He doesn't have a fucking extra bedroom or bed for him or something, but maybe that's part of the training, right? Who knows? Love to know your thoughts on any of this down in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Darby Allen in general? Darby as an AEW uh, franchise player, the guy that will stick with the company no matter what. 
Uh, and what do you think about him as a wrestling trainer, especially training Sting's son of all people? And what do you think about Sting's son getting into the business? I'd love to hear it all. Also, just, you know, if you want to just tell me your shoe size or something. I don't give a fuck. It just helps the algorithm. Let me know in the comments below. Peace, love, and pizza. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next. That video that was a real slobber knock. Head on down to the comments. Put a little barbecue sauce on the like button. And while you're there, I would subscribe so you don't miss any other videos. Leave a comment. Everybody's got a fucking comment.